So my effort will be uh, to take the young mind, at least enthuse them uh, to the science of space in doing some sort of uh, research and take the R&D forward. In that effort, you know, tomorrow's uh, entire humanity, the academia, the R&D, the industry, they will be the one who will be ruling the skies. And they, that is where our students of today, the young people today, come forward. As far as we are concerned, I'd say we are a very small nitty can you guess where do we stand in this universe? You can't guess. On the first slide that we have, uh, you can see how our solar system from almost uh, nearly 165 astronomical years. Astronomical unit is about uh, sun's distance from the Earth. 165 times of that, that is what you see in the first slide here. So that is where we are. And from there, when we try to look at the moon, you know, questions are being asked. Why moon? Well, it is the closest celestial body that we know of. And it is ever shining in our imaginations. We have been told of Chanda Mama right from our childhood. And various stories at different levels are there. That is the importance of moon. And the science today is trying to explore the moon in various ways that I have tried to show. So uh, starting from there, then we uh, go to the uh, the lunar surface, there are various of the intricacies. See, the intricacies of lunar uh, missions are various. Of the about 147 odd uh, missions that we have had, just less than 50% have been successful, whether it is to pass by through the moons, make an orbit there, or uh, uh, land there on the lunar surface. So it's a very challenging one. As far as the, those, among those intricacies, uh, what we actually know is just about one-fourth of the diameter or compared to the Earth, about one-fifth of the gravity, one-sixth of the gravity. And so it's a bit different. That is how it takes all those things. And the worst, there is no atmosphere. There is no magnetism. So everything that comes from the sun, all solar flares, is going to fall straight onto the lunar surface. Makes extremely difficult. The first 10 uh, missions and the next 14 missions, they all failed, except those two uh, USSR trials of the Luna that succeeded. And first craft landed there in the, uh, you know, uh, somewhere around the February by USSR uh, 66 and June 66 by the US. So, you know, there have been problems, but yes, man, landed there in the effort of the US in their Apollo 11, aircraft, 11 craft in 69. And then thereafter, it has been going on. Renewed interests are there after uh, 2014, especially 2018 onwards, when we have had 26 odd launches in this time. So explorations of the lunar surface is the one to collect the scientific data. That is why we are sending our crafts there. And also, uh, in terms of the marking territories, like we have gone to the Arctic, Antarctic, every nation are trying to mark their territories. Exploration of the moon is absolutely fine. That is the need of the day. But in the coming days, exploitation is something which is very, very dangerous. It, it, could, it could be catastrophic. Do you know, if we send a satellite to the Earth, it contains a very fine balance. And that is how the uh, orbital velocity of the moon have been there for billions of years. It is going around the Earth. And in that effort, if we change the mass of the moon by exploitation, if we change the velocity of the moon for some reason, it could be catastrophic. Either the moon can come towards Earth, head towards Earth for the impact, or it could go away. So that is the type of intricacy that we maintain. There are also statements that it could be a staging post. When we send any mission to the deep space, it could be the staging post for uh, it to stay there. And then, because the gravity at the moon is there, it would be easier to send anything forward. But there are the counter arguments, because the fuel 
that will be wasting in the lunar insertion and touching down there is huge. That loss is much more outweighing the other things. Now the renewed efforts, here we are looking for value addition. Value addition is something what is the need of the science. Whenever we send the next craft, it has got more functions. So it could be a zero waste regeneration technology. You know, when we send our uh, astronauts to the space, they need to waste minimum so that they can sustain there. It could be an alternative landing uh, techniques through various uh, ways. Uh, you know, in the moon, there are places where there are the mass comms, small localized high gravity area. And in those high gravity area, some of the craft could be pulled down. So those alternative landing techniques, multi hops that could be there to explore various areas or even retrieve some of the lost satellite or the functional satellites. It could be uh, returned from the moons by a fair means. You know, it's, uh, returning from there is fraught with another danger because when we try to come out from there, you have various problems that could be uh, facing through. So in those value addition, America, of course, is working. They are trying to send Artemis three in another two years or so with the human uh, presence there. That will be a starting point for the inhabitation in the moon. Well, the topic today is something like cycle to moon. Yes, there must have been a reason for those payloads to be carried on the cycle or the satellite on the Bullock craft. Today, we are much more advanced. We have got the PS will be, which is absolutely automated. We have GSLV-3, we have LVM, a launching vehicle, with which Chandrayaan has been sent. So all those things are there. So there are numerous milestones for the ISRO that has been created. And one of those to remember is SLV-3 that we had seen in the early 80s. And then we have you know, Chandrayaan 1, 2, 3, we have got Mangalyaan, uh, we have sent the uh, craft to the, uh, you know, L1 point, Lagrangian 1 point, that Adit is just been inserted few days back. So these are all the laurels of the ISRO. Most of you might have seen me standing in some of the TV channels, you know, uh, trying to analyze what is happening during the launches. People keep on asking why so-and-so inclination, why it is not going vertical, why it's going at a slant. When we send the craft, the rocket is going there, it has got strap-on motors, which has to fall down somewhere after it has burnt out. First stage, after it has finished the function, it has to fall down. Where it will fall down? It has to fall down somewhere in the safer place, and the ocean is the best place. So we send the craft, we launch the site at a place where the sea is available for taking those fallouts from there safely. And then, as you see in the last uh, slide here, there are various insertions, various orbits in which we want to launch those, introduce or inject those satellites. So that gives us a time. In the space, we work backward. At a particular speed, we go backward. We calculate the time, and then we have a small uh, window period in which we can launch. If we miss that, then we have to again come back uh, somewhere to the close. A lot of people keep on asking, why is India taking Chandrayaan? It takes 45 days or two months or three months. Why not go straight like you know, Russia had sent or someone else had sent? Yes, that's a valid question. We utilize with the minimum of the resources, minimum of the fuel, how we can send the craft to the moon. In that effort, every time that we raise the orbit, it passes through the LEO, low Earth orbit. But there is a danger. Today, there are a lot of satellites and the debris in the low Earth orbit which can impact those bodies. So today, we are sending through the various slingshots we generate this velocity to send it to the moon, but in the subsequent time, when the LEO has got a lot of debris, we may have to think of uh, injecting it directly from there, but then 
there are problems of injecting, sending it directly because velocity is immense and when you want to slow those velocity during the lunar insertion, that becomes a problem. You know, here, from when we send from the Earth, it is 11.2 kilometers per second of the velocity, which is the escape velocity, but when it goes to the Moon, it is just about 2.3 kilometers per second. So that much of intricacy has to be there, that much of precision has, been, has to be there, otherwise those craft will escape Moon, it will go into the deep space. That is how we go from the International Space Station. When we look at the moon, it is so fantastic, so glamorous, but stepping onto it is so difficult, equally a problem. As far as the challenges of is there, the unpredictability of the launcher, the craft, the rocket is there. But besides that, you know, when we send the craft, like uh, SpaceX sends the craft, this Every time that it passes through the atmosphere, this throws out a lot of atmosphere out of the Earth into the deep space. This Falcon 9 aircraft, the SpaceX, every time it goes, it throws off four times of California. That much of the atmosphere goes into the space and we are wasting that. Tomorrow, our next generation will be suffering with that. No one is talking about it. Equally important is the, uh, the, the uh, fuel of the rocket that is burning out. You know, recently, that starship, you might have seen it. When it had gone to the space, it had gone to the upper atmosphere, it had to be destroyed. And in that destruction, thousands of tons of the fuel had to be wasted there, it had to be burnt there, and that remains in the outer atmosphere, because in the stratosphere, temperature is something which doesn't allow any air particle to come down. That convection current is missing, so it remains in the, uh, in the upper atmosphere for many of the uh, years or even decades. That is causing a huge greenhouse effect no one is talking of. Even the United States, the UN, the entire human rights body, they are silent about it. Now, challenges as far as it's concerned, uh, intricacies of the lunar insertion I have already talked of. Orbiting, landing is so difficult that most of the craft, they, have, they are finding it difficult. They are approaching now uh, ISRO to give them the technology for a precise landing. Uh, withstanding the type of temperature that is there on the lunar surface. You know, in the daytime it goes to about plus 120 degrees Celsius. In the night it is freezing to about minus 230 degrees Celsius. So some craft, human body or anything that goes, they will have to withstand this sort of uh, temperature. Unhindered radiations are coming in the absence of the atmospheric blanket. So these are the problems. There will be a requirement of very robust life support system for the human to exist there. And that life support system has to have also using the lunar resources if we have to uh, stay there for longer time. Intricacies are returned are in plenty because it takes a very precision effort to return back from there. The day is obviously hot, but the mornings are not what you know is looking here. Morning sunlight when it comes, it is as strong as of the noon time because there is no atmosphere. Sun ray falling onto you is equally uh, strong as it is in the daytime. Uh, subsequently, the radiations and the uh, all, all meteorites they all come to falling to strike to you. South Pole was the one where we are trying for it because we expect that to be much cooler in the daytime because the when sunlight comes there strikes there it is at a slant and at that slant uh, less of the uh, the infrared is going to be absorbed by the lunar surface so that gives them slightly cooler temperature it is Artemis USA is trying to send it there, and that is the delay that they are having it because they have to have a robust, uh, immediate requirements of breathing gases, uh, water, food, shelter, everything has to be carried out from the earth. Uh, breathing gas, of course, oxygen without which we cannot live, immediate requirement has to be sent from here. And when they are thinking of regenerating those lunar uh, uh, surface for the oxygen, they are our oxides. It's a huge process. They, uh, it needs almost like a, the oxygen to be supplied there. Equally important is the shelter, energy requirements, of course, for the energy, uh, uh, the so 
solar systems are there to generate the power. A uh, 14-day Earth is a huge lot. Here in, uh, you know, on the Earth, when we spend one day, at towards the end of the day, we feel sleepy. There, can you survive for those 14 days at a stretch? You have to adapt yourself with the modified sort of circadian rhythm so that within one day of the moon, you can have many of the day and night cycles for you to uh, work there. Work uh, rest schedule has to be uh, equally important is the surface water. We expect that there is uh, water on the both poles, but whether we will be able to use those water, that is a question. We had sent our Chandrayaan 3, it has not found water where it has landed. So you have to land at a precise uh, space where a, those waters are there. Otherwise, subsurface uh, water is expected to be there at about uh, 30 to 40 kilometers depth when we are finding it difficult to draw even uh, one fourth of the kilometer of the water uh, here on the earth. So those technologies have to survive. Food, cultivation. Uh, is it possible there? Well, we have done some sort of cultivation in the International Space Station. It would be a challenge there on the moon. You know, when we intend to send, uh, ISRO has sent its uh, communication satellites to the low Earth. There are plenty. It is so useful. Now it is trying to go to the moon, Mars, Lagrangian point. Very laudable. Indigenous systems are the one which is the need of the hours. When we are sending our Gaganyan uh, tomorrow, in that, entire indigenous system and that is where ISRO must uh, uh, bring up one independent space certification body that will take care of all requirements that the human don't fail into those systems and those systems don't fail in occupying it. So this will request the, uh, the ISRO to go. The, subsequently it comes to the last that what we are going to gain. The futuristic R&D is the one where we are expecting you, youth, to go into it. You know, you must believe that you can do it. Today, the world body is finding it difficult. UN is finding it difficult. But you are the youth who has to take it. Funer resources, how you can use it for yourself. You have to see it. That will be the technology of tomorrow. Carbon loading onto the lunar surface because we will be spoiling the moon, what we have been having the fascinations all through. Similarly, the the dust on the moon is eating some of those microbes, some of those lives we feed on the food. There could be some other microbes on the moon to those regolith. Do we know about them? No, we don't. So these are the entire uh, you know, gamut of the space research that is possible for the younger generation uh, today. Well, cycle to moon is a phase of natural development of the technology in any nation and that is for equally important for us to know and uh, I wish the youth of today they come and they take their research and development towards the space. Thank you very much.